I've never heard of this idea of experiential intelligence or, you know, XQ as you dub it. And the, the catch for me was, look, we all know about IQ. It's one of those things you really want to, oh man, I want that high IQ. And then as things progressed and people got a little more culturally aware, I think we, we really focused on EQ. And now you're saying that the next evolution of that, or in addition to that, is this idea of XQ. So we'll just start off with something you've probably answered a million times. What is it? Yeah, like you said, the framing is we've known your, our intellectual intellect and intellectual intelligence is important for you know success and life and business. Um, then we learned emotional intelligence, EQ, is also important and being in touch with our own emotions and the emotions of others. That EQ was introduced like 30, 40 years ago. So mm -hmm. the idea that there, there's this other dimension, our experiences giving us kind of the street smarts to navigate in today's disruptive world, it, it's just, it's intu an intuitive concept, but it's just been missing from how we think about what makes someone smart, what makes someone intelligent and broadening the definition so that it's our experiences also so that we can navigate the fast changing world, all the disruptive technologies. And even think about these days, when you look at artificial intelligence, what, how do we even think, you know, what, what makes us different as human beings? It's the experiences we have, which shape how we think our mindsets, the abilities we develop and just what we know how to do. And, and that's what experiential intelligence is. It's not replacing anything. It's adding to the dialogue of what makes people who they are and, and, and smart. Yeah. And I, I read something where you called it, you know, your unique internal fingerprint. And I think you just alluded to that, how it becomes that. But tell us a little bit more about how our XQ is really unique to us and creates that uh, uniqueness, the uniqueness that is not repeatable. Sure. Well, the, the concept of experiential intelligence came out of psychology and the former president of the American Psychological Association introduced the word. Now I've expanded upon it and kind of connected in a lot of research around psychology and sociology, neuroscience, but just to, you know, kind of bring it to life. Um, I, I, and I talk about this in, in my book because I had a really tough childhood. My, my mother developed a mental illness when I was three. We moved, uh, 16 times by the time I was 15 and my father wow. was very rarely around. So, uh, you know, that, that, impacted me in in how I think it impacted me and you know what I was able or not able to do in in my childhood so for example I may or may not have you know uh, I might have thought I had a ride home I, I might have waited and not had a ride home and had to figure it out at a very young age um, I had to make decisions with very little data I had to live with a lot of ambiguity now those things that traumatized me also gave me unique gifts Mm -hmm. that I've used to do startups, to work in organ large organizations and decipher cultures, work with leaders. And so the same things that shape us oftentimes early on into our adulthood can create things that we need to heal from potentially, but also instill unique gifts and it's tapping into those gifts, which is really your experiential intelligence. And so, you know, there's those are that's my personal story, but there's a lot of research and there's a lot of other examples that really show how our experiences instill ways of thinking, mindsets, abilities, and just practical knowledge and skills. It's like the 10,000 hour rule. It's like the street smarts. And now we just have a structure to sort of think about it and understand it. 